D-type connectors are widely seen in industrial defense, military, avionics applications. In terms of the EMC performance, the connector quality and also the shielded cable quality are important when it comes to passing EMC uh, related tests, whether emission type or immunity type. Okay, And as we proved in our previous episode that uh, aluminium foil with drain wire is not really suitable for such applications if you are dealing with high frequency signal design for critical uh, applications. So the solutions can either be you make a really good quality shielded cable by having your own assembly or special assembly that you buy from good quality manufacturers. Alternatively, if you want to have a richer fit solution because what you're working on is time critical and mission critical, then what we're going to demonstrate in this episode may help you. So let's have a look. This is a metallic housing box and uh, this again is your screened cable. Here we just simplify things. We draw one cable, right, one wire, but it's actually it could be a bundle of wires which are power or signal, things like that. And of course we can improve the screen uh, shielding effectiveness as we presented from the previous episodes, but often this is not enough. So in, in the field of EMC, what we always do is we improve both, right? We improve both the shielding effectiveness of a shield, screened cable, but also we will improve the, the filter uh, that is often located inside the box. But here's the thing. If you are a design engineer, of course you have the freedom of designing what's inside the box. But for a system engineer who buy this box from somewhere else, and you put it already on your platform, and then you realize by changing the screen cable simply does not fix the problem. Now what are you gonna do? And if you design a filter inside the box, what is inside the box is often as we draw like, a, like an LC filter. Now this LC filter can be differential mode, but most of the time is common mode. So reality, this LC will be a common mode choke, right, and uh, depends on how many wires uh, are there. So you can have a three wire common mode choke and uh, capacitors. And these capacitors are important. And as you can see, these capacitors, one end is connected to the signal or power wire you wanted to filter the noise. But the other end is very important. This end is often connected to the metallic enclosure itself, often what we call chassis connection. Okay, so these capacitors are connected to the chassis, therefore from the common mode point of view, right? So if I draw common mode currents generated inside the box, what's gonna happen is that these currents, right, will go like this way and they all go in the same direction and their return path would be just on the chassis itself, okay? So the return path is on the chassis. Okay, so I'm gonna draw, this is the chassis. And as you can see, it's important to place these capacitors connected to chassis. Therefore, this noise will see a low impedance path. Therefore, they're gonna circulate back to the source. And this is a short route for noise to travel. Therefore, it's just like nature, right? If there's a short path, if there's a uh, easier way, then noise will use it. So these capacitors will then guide the noise back to the noise source. So if I draw it from the common mode point of view in this box, it will be like this, right? Coming back to the source. So here is the noise source. So that's how it works, okay? And of course you can tune these capacitors so they work in different frequency uh, range, right? So typically if the capacitors has uh, have smaller capacitance value, then it works to the higher frequency end. But one thing you need to consider, right, is that first we mentioned that if you are not a design engineer, then you don't have the freedom of designing these capacitors inside the box, okay? The second thing is, if you're now gonna place a capacitor inside a box, right? So the way we draw a capacitor is we have something like this, right? But this is an ideal component. Typically with a capacitor, you're gonna have some capacitor and also you're gonna have some inductance and resistance, right? And the inductance of the capacitor actually is not large. 
But often when you connect a capacitor, what is most important thing is the length of the lead of the capacitor because this introduces significantly high inductance value. And this will become a problem in the higher frequency range where you want to filter the noise. So the trick here really is if you want to connect the capacitor, you would like to connect the capacitor to the chassis using a short connection. But how can you achieve that, especially if you don't have the control of design in the box? So let's have a look. So in May this year, when we were hosting the EMC and Compliance International Conference in the UK, I was visiting the uh, exhibition and um, I met a company called Quill, okay? And they make interesting stuff for controlling and mitigating EMI. This is a brochure. We can see their application is on, uh, for mainly focused on aerospace, military defense, avionics, etc. Okay, and the idea really is to uh, incorporate these tiny little filters on this silicone seal, where then you can just put this seal inside your connector. And then they will give you certain dB of or insertion loss. For more detailed information, you can find on their website. Uh, you can see typically uh, they make these are the standard connector uh, shape, but I believe you can also ask them to make it for you. So yeah, let's have a look at the sample and he sent to me. So that's the sample. This is the side where you can see all the details, right? It's very soft, very delicate. You can see the components here, really, right? Uh, in this uh, form, form uh, factor, okay? This side is what they call the top side. You're supposed to do this, really, okay? So let's give it a go and see uh, how good this uh, little seal performs. Okay. So this is halfway through. You can see all the pins um, penetrate through the seal. And all, I'm need to, all I need to do is to uh, push the seal back to the bottom of the connector and test it. Okay, so now the seal is placed in the connector and we set up again the same uh, setup. And let's have a look at the frequency performance first, okay? So the green trace is with the seal and the yellow trace is without the seal, right? So it's very interesting, isn't it? You can see a really good uh, noise reduction, sort of from 20 megahertz all the way, you can see a, a broadband reduction, especially I would say in a higher frequency range where more than 20 dB reduction is achieved by having this uh, 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 um, a filter component. Well, it does make sense because this particular seal has a small capacitor of picofarads range. So, you know, tens of picofarads. So, yeah, it's uh, very effective in a higher frequency range. Not so much at the lower frequency range, as you can see. I mean, particularly as we demonstrated, this low frequency noise can be suppressed if uh, the drain wire is uh, is connected properly but in this case it is not right so i suspect this cable might have the uh, drain wire sort of uh, not terminated well okay but uh, yeah the high in terms of the high frequency performance is really good from the uh, frequency domain analysis uh, let's have a quick look at the time domain okay so this is the time domain analysis so we put the uh, red trace as a reference. So that's again the time domain um, signal we measured before the seal was inserted. And um, the, the yellow trace is when after the seal was inserted. You can really see the big difference, isn't it? So in terms of the peak-to-peak uh, uh, -peak noise um, measurement amplitude, it's now reduced to about 560 microamps. Whereas the, the previous case, uh, I, I, can't, I, I can't remember, but you can clearly see from this measurement is a lot higher. Um, so yeah, again, all we left is really this 10 megahertz fundamental frequency, um, which again can be uh, further improved uh, by using a better shielded cable. I should also highlight that when using such EMI suppression components, first thing you really need to do is to check if there's a dirt around the surface. Right, inside the connector. And if so, definitely make sure that you clean them 
like mine, for example, got some dust there. I didn't clean. And also uh, depends on the uh, material type. You want to definitely check the conductivity, especially the internal surface of the connector, because uh, that particular uh, component we test, really, they're just small capacitor bypass capacitors. So you really want to have a really good uh, ground connection to the uh, connector, um, you know, as, as, as good as you can. So uh, that's the first thing you really need to do. So in, in our case, for example, it, we got some dirt, so it will definitely degrade the, the filter performance by some extent, okay?